Hey guys, how you doing? It's Andy Elliott. I'm here today with Casey Nix. Guys, Casey is a awesome sales trainer. Casey is in dealerships uh, every week, obviously, other than right now during the COVID-19. Um, he's probably doing what a lot of people are doing or bunkering down, but um, staying sharp training, guys. The reason why I have Casey with us, I want you guys to meet him. He, there's two things I want to talk about today with him. We'll, we'll make this interview about our goal is uh, 10, 15 minutes, but I'm going to tell you, you don't want to get off track here. You want to stay and watch this full video. Number one, uh, Casey's going to give some great pointers about what we need to be focusing on to come out of the COVID-19 and kill it. And even five years from now, what he's about to talk about, I'm going to tell you is extremely relevant. And then secondly, um, I want to talk about uh, Casey deals with the world, like wounded warriors and stuff like that. And veterans, guys, Success comes from a place of gratefulness and gratitude. And I want Casey to finish up with that before we end the call, because he's got a couple amazing stories that I want him to share with you. Um, so Casey, introduce yourself and uh, let's talk about uh, maybe the COVID-19, how you feel like people need to be preparing, dealer, GM, salesman, all the way around. Casey Nix, automotive business since 1983. Don't do the math, please don't do the math. I've uh, been with Toyota most of my career. Uh, as I got into the dealership part of it, it's all been Toyota. And, and the big reason for me with Toyota is, is I've never sold anybody a vehicle and they called me back weeks later and said, hey, man, you sold me a bad vehicle. So it's kind of been uh, ingrained in what I've done. Uh, started out in the car business when I was finishing school at Texas Tech University, uh, repossessing cars. One of the things that will keep you uh, finishing school is if uh, you repossess cars for a while and you have an option for school, you go back and finish school. That's, a, that's crazy. I didn't know that. Um, so how do, how, how do you feel about right now um, with some people obviously being in the stores, some people being furloughed, right? Um, skeleton crews, some dealerships have cut a lot of their staff. Um, whether you're on the staff that's still in the store or the staff that, that's at home, you know what I'm saying? Wherever you're at, um, what is some great advice that you would, you would like to give to some people to prepare for? Andy, I'll apologize up front. Maybe you shouldn't have done this interview because I've got a real opinion on this. Uh, first of all, for all you guys that are furloughed or laid off, um, you've called me, um, we've instant messaged. I, I, I've tried to take my time and my wife has told me to turn the phone off, guys, and I can't. Um, everybody asks for the answer and I, if I had the answer, I would paint it for you guys. There is really no answer, but here's what I want you to think about. If you come back out of this, you're the asset. I've been telling people this forever. It's just a car. It's just a truck. It's just a van. It's just a piece of equipment. The reason why people say yes is because of the sales professional. If you want to get great in the car business, have somebody burning desire when they leave the dealership to call the phone and go, hey, I just met this guy, KC Nix. I just met Andy. And man, if you guys are ever thinking about buying a car, you need to go and experience what I just experienced. It's nothing, nothing like I've ever seen before. So you're the asset. There's a lot of salespeople out there right now that are working at a job, making money. And I got it, man. You're making money and you're guaranteed money. You've got a client base. You built it up, but you're working in a situation that you weren't happy. You gripe about it every day. Um, you don't like what's above you. Don't like what's below you. And now you've been furloughed from the car business. Find some place that's going to give you some heart. If you work around people that charge you every single day and, and, and they nurture you and you have people that you're developing, then you're going to grow in the car business. And it's no longer going to be the car business, it's going to be your business. So the end of this needs to be all about you. You're the asset. As people come back to buy cars, dealers are going to have to hire back. And the skill that's been laid off right now may be the greatest skill out there in America. You guys know how to put something together at any given time with a total stranger. You're an asset. That's what I would say, Andy. Dude, that's amazing. That's exactly what I was just talking about the other day is uh, creating yourself as being your own business inside of the business. Is that right? I mean, that's what this is, right? That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, so we've got, we've got people what? out there that, you know, you know, them and I know them, they, they average 30 to 60 cars a month and it's not an accident. You don't fall into that. And no. they're working three steps away from sales professionals that are selling eight cars a month in the same right. environment, in the same business. So, you know, I, it's never really been the walk around or the demo drive or the skills to the road to the sale. It's the individual that makes the difference. And that's what I want everybody to understand. 
you know, I did a deal, if you don't mind me just uh, jumping no, in. No, come on. I did, Bring I, it on. I did a Highlander launch for Boston. And every once in a while, I do these launches. And I get to see people I haven't seen in forever. And, and it's great to launch a new vehicle because it's all new. It's all fresh. So I showed up the very first day with this big, giant mirror. And uh, the guy that was running the launch for the Boston region said, what's the mirror for us? Well, you're not, you're not allowed to ask if you can't figure it out. So I wrote on there 2020 Toyota Highlander launch, and I had every sales professional and every manager that attended the event sign the mirror with different color Sharpie markers. So at the end, there was a thousand signatures all over this mirror, and I would start every meeting by saying, does anybody know what the mirror is about? I had five people out of a thousand. I, you can do the math right there. It's not, that's not a big percentage. But what I said was, I said, it's, is the Highlander 2020 better than the 19? Absolutely. Absolutely. Toyota does great jobs when they bring new vehicles out, but it's not the Highlander. It's just a stupid car. It's the people that were looking in the mirror that signed on there. So I, I gifted that back to the region because the reason Amazing. they're going to be selling cars didn't have anything to do with somebody painting a car. It had to do with somebody getting in front of somebody and convincing them that their product is right for them. So I love that whole mirror thing, you know? So it, yeah, that's that, was, beautiful. That, was, that was, that was fun. That was fun. You come up with that on your own? You know, I, I, I got to tell you this, you know, when you're in the car business, you think, think about crazy stuff. No, you think about whimsical things that other people look at you and they go, what's wrong with you? And I go, I don't know. It's car business. <laughs> I love it, dude. No, you got to be crazy to be in this business, but you got to be crazy passionate. Um, yeah. One thing that I can tell by looking at you, you have a fire, you have a desire, you're passionate and your believability that this business is still the best business in the world to look to, to, to be in is written all over your face, man. And I love that. I, and I can see why so many people, when they do business with you, they want to get better. They want to go to the next level. And I feel like one of the things that you're getting to, you hadn't really just said it yet, but one of the things that you're saying is salespeople need to take ownership for themselves. Absolutely. And not be a part of the pack. They need to create their own, like you said, their own individual um, self inside the store and that they can get ahead so far if they're not just trying to please their managers and please the store. They got to start treating this like their own business all the way around, right? Yeah. Andy, I guess if you, if you wanted to do it and make it like a math problem, you can sit there and say, hey, you guys can make fifty dollars to $100,000 a year with limited skills as long as you have a great attitude and can follow directions. Now, how much of your money that you have saved are you willing to invest in this business to open your company? And I don't know what people would say, but they would, they, if they knew they could make $100,000, they'd invest money, wouldn't they? Absolutely. You walk into a dealership, you don't pay anything for the HVAC, the heating, ventilation, mm -hmm. and cooling. You don't pay for the inventory. You don't pay for the staff behind you, the clerical. You don't pay for the advertisement. You basically walk in there. You don't even have to have a pen. So what a gift to be able to have a job so that somebody else is fronted all the money and yep. you get 20 to 30% of the net yield of, of what they've created. You know, I kind of feel sorry for the business owners of the world right now because, you know, they threw everything they had in a business and there's no guarantee that they come out of the back end of this with, with the company. That's the truth. And, and, and the difference in dealerships today, would you say that it's the people inside of them? You I said the, I, well, you said the Highlander is just the car, right? Just the car. It's the people that sell it that make the Highlander so special, even though the Highlander is a great product. So well, there's how do you, options. yeah, there's other options. You know, you, yeah. there's, you, you, you know, you don't have to buy a Toyota. There's other options. So, you know, nobody needs to get cocky enough to think that just because you make a decent car, that the only reason people buy it is because of the brand and the quality. That's part of it, but people still have to say yes, you know, and, and, yeah. and what I love about salespeople is when they contact me and go, hey, Casey, I'm working on about 75% repeat and referral. That's beautiful. Forget the world, man. If you're, if you're, if you're, if people are calling you and going, hey, I just, Jimmy just called me and he just bought a car from you and I want a car. He told me I'd be stupid not to come to you. That's when you know that you've impacted somebody. And I think that's the best part of the business for me is when you yeah. build. Yeah. Yeah. You just nailed it. Well, you said the word impact. Okay. And people that have that fire, that desire, and that, that they want to be successful and they're going to make this their, their own business, even if they haven't built their business yet with that fire in them, they automatically make impact already, even if they're not successful yet, right? Just because of the believability standpoint. Do you agree with that? 
I agree. And I, and I, you know, we could, we could probably talk for days and never yeah. cut this thing out. But, yeah. I, but I always tell salespeople, I said, you know, when you get to the dealership, don't clock in, walk into a bathroom, maybe in the back, maybe where the techs go or something, find a mirror and look in the mirror and lean deep into that mirror and go, Whoa, I just sold a car, you know, and, and act like you just delivered the hardest deal you ever did. Because once you deliver a car, the next one's easy. You get on yeah. fire on a Saturday and do five cars on a Saturday, you know, three, four, and five didn't have a chance when they walked in the door because you're just on top of the world and you're, you're sucking everybody into the vortex of your energy and your passion. The yeah. problem is, is when, when you see men and women walk into the dealership and they're dragging the top of their shoes off, you know, like they lost a puppy last night. And Hey, yeah. by the way, if anybody's watching this and you actually lost a puppy last night, I apologize. Yeah, I no offense. Dramatic, right. But I mean, yeah. You know, jog into the dealership, man. Come in on your toes. You know, it's like when a football team takes the field. Nobody just strolls yeah. out there and looks and goes, man, there's not enough people in the stands today. I don't know if I want to play. They charge out there. They bust a banner and everything. Should be every day. Should Dude, be every day. That could be the best analogy I've ever heard in my life. That's amazing, man. I love it. Okay. Um, obviously, like you said, me and you could go on for 10 million years. Um, yeah, obviously, what you've said right there, if we if we ended that and they took that and took action on that, that would change someone's life just in general. I wish someone had told me that when I was 18. Um, so I want to ask you next. Tell, tell me about um, what, what you do with like the Wounded Warriors and stuff like that and, 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 and what you're passionate about. Because obviously, I'm going to tell you this. You seem very peaceful. You seem very happy. OK, I believe in this business. Attitude is everything. OK, because with a bad attitude, it's the death of you. Um, what 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 keeps you grateful? What keeps you motivated? Would you share some of those things with me? Yeah, and I've shared this a lot over the five years of my Saturday morning meeting, my YouTube channel. I, I, I try to make it a personal message every week and not a meeting of tricking somebody, a meeting of just being real. Um, I think that every person needs to find an outlet. I've got a couple. Um, you know, I ride motorcycles and, and I don't ride with a group. I ride by myself and, you know, you're out in the middle of nowhere. You have time to reflect, no music, just, uh, just a highway. And that helps me it, but, but giving back and realizing how good you have it. I'm, I'm going to tell you a story and I hope this doesn't offend anybody. And then I'll go into the, to the warriors. Um, I'm driving in Louisiana. It was last year and I was doing some work, um, in that state. And I took some back roads, you know, because I hadn't driven that part of the state before. And Andy, it, the poverty there, you could just see from the side of the road that was, was unbelievable. And I picked the phone up and, and, I, and I called my wife and I told her, I said, I, I feel so grateful and, that people have trusted me enough that we've made a living. I said, this is, this is humbling to see this. So I tell, I don't care if you go work at a hospital, um, if you go work serving food once a week in, 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 uh, in an outreach, um, if you donate money to St. Jude's, anybody can throw money. Everybody should donate some of your money back because you're getting money because people are trusting you. But to physically get involved in something. And a few years ago, I met a, a man named Dana Bowman. You guys can look him up. He's uh, a, a miraculous sergeant. Uh, Army Ranger, just an amazing man. And he does a chapter that's uh, called Halo for Freedom. And he brings people in once a year or twice a year to an event. It's a four-day event. They fly them in from Walter Reed. And, and uh, Andy, these people, they, they're, they're amazing. They're young men and, and they've been life changed. They've lost their legs. They've lost their arms. They've, they've been burnt. They've lost their eyesight. Um, it's, it's crazy. I'll give you one quick story. The first year I was there, there's a guy named Joel and he'd been burned in a, in a Humvee accident. He couldn't get out in 85% of his body. He was blind and they parachute him in to an area where we're having uh, live gunfire and stuff. So they're all tandem jumping in. And I told him, I said, I'll be there when you land with your wheelchair, man. Cause that's, I'm all just labor that day. Right. <clears throat> and he landed and I, and he, I go, how was it? He goes, dude, it's great. I said, what'd you see first? He goes, shut up, Casey, you know, I'm blind, but you know, just that thing back and forth, you know, just, just keep, keep their spirits going. So normally they don't repeat and come back a second year. So the man comes back a second year. I spent four days in and out with him, Andy. The second year, he's in a room, way across the room. And I went, Joel, he goes, KC. And I'm going like, how is that possible? 
So it yeah. was his senses on the other side were so enhanced after he wow. launched this site. But you sit down and talk to these people and you realize, okay, COVID 19's here. Um, I'm not working right now. I've got no income and the government doesn't have a way to be able to substitute. So I'm, you know, that I should be woe is me and everything, but I just spent a few, a, a month ago, um, with a group of people that have suffered their whole life. And so this is nothing, this is nothing. And when you right. can see through the eyes of other people and you become a help, when you, when you've done something for somebody, not for any kind of revenue or money, it just, it gives you something back. And I challenge every person that watches your videos that watch this today, when you're in a car business, you see some guy come in and you know, he's in the car business cause he's got nothing. He goes, why, well, you don't know, like cars and I like people. Let me try this. And he's got no business being in, the, in, in this industry. And you walk over and you grab hold of him and say, brother, let me help you work this out. It's not as hard as everybody thinks. And the next thing you know, you're in Disney with your family and some guy yells out across Disney and goes, hey, KC. And you're going, hey, wow, don't know who this guy is. He walks yeah. up, he introduces his family, his wife, to my wife and my kids. He goes, this is the guy, baby, I always talk about. This is the guy that did everything for me. He walked away and Courtney goes, who is that guy? I said, never met, I, I, I have no idea. But, but can you, at the end of your life, come back and sit there and go, I helped people because, not because I got paid for it, because yeah. it, it helped me. So I, I, I'm, I'm kind of greedy because being able to help somebody helps me more than them. It really does, brother. Dude, you just nailed it, man. I would say I would like to add something behind that, but I think that that's too much to chew on. What you just gave would allow me to just watch this video a hundred times over for one year and not learn anything else. And that would be enough fire for me to want to, A, realize that I'm grateful in my place, no matter what that place looks like, because of the men that you're talking about that have served for our country, their gratefulness that they come from and what they have been through is nothing like we will probably ever experience. Never. And um, with that being said, it makes you just want to say, okay, you know what? My life's pretty damn good right now. Really, really good. Really yeah, really good. good. And you need to call your wife. You need to call your kid. Show them massive love. Whatever call you your have. parents. Call your friends. Hey, you want to see? You want to hear something stupid? So I played college baseball. So everybody's had so much time on their land. I got a picture the other day of a bunch of us at Dudley Field in a college baseball game and all these guys way long time ago, brother, don't even want to say how long ago are all reconnecting and telling stupid college baseball stories. You know, that's, that's how awesome. long, that's how long ago this is. But you know, those people in your life that, that you don't contact anymore. Hey, if you've got a few minutes and you're wondering what you need to do, why don't you call them up, tell them you love them. Dude, you're amazing, dude. I'm going to tell you, I think that you made a giant impact on everybody today. And um, obviously uh, it was a gift and a blessing to have you here with us. And I think that you're awesome. And I think if anybody doesn't know who you are, they know who you are now and you're amazing. And obviously I see why you're so killer at what you do because you have a beautiful set of lenses on your life, on the way that you see it. And I yep. think sometimes somebody can just change their perspective and that can change their whole. Life. So um, you're amazing. And I know you're going to go finish roofing your son's house. Yeah. Um, yeah. which is crazy. So you're constantly still working hard and grinding it. So, Hey, have a great day guys. This is Casey Nix. And um, I want you to meet him. Casey, you want to say anything last before we jump off? Yeah. Andy, I was going to direct something to you. I, I appreciate you reaching out to me right now. Um, you're very young and you're very gifted. You have a, a lot of life ahead of you. Um, you never know what you say that's going to turn somebody's life around. So never have a bad day, brother. Man, you're awesome. Okay, brother. Well, listen, I love you. You're awesome. And I haven't even met you, but I'm going to tell you I love you because I think you're awesome. So you're great. And uh, I appreciate it. And everybody, uh, comment below if you got anything you want to say to Casey. And uh, we appreciate you, brother. Okay? All right. See you guys later. Have a great time when we come back.